Sometime tomorrow, uh, this body will consider a number of nominations for final confirmation, among them Matthew Kazmerk to the District Court for the Northern District of Texas. Now, a federal district judge serves a particular area of the country, but in effect, the whole country has a stake in this nomination because a judge helps to define and refine and apply the law of the United States, setting precedent that applies to the entire country. It isn't just the Northern District of Texas that has a stake in this nomination. It is the entire country. And so this alarming and appalling nomination should be of particular interest to my colleagues. It is the result of a process that very unfortunately has been demeaned and degraded. It is a shadow of what it once was. In the scrutiny that's given and the time that is devoted, this process is failing to assure the independence of the judiciary. Now is the time when that independence must be assured because from this time forward, these judges are lifetime appointees with no accountability to this body or any other elected official. In previous years, under other Republican administrations, there was an adequate time to debate. There were full and fair hearings. Nominees answered questions about their views on issues that are relevant to their service. That process has been severely undercut, indeed decimated now. And what we have before us again and again and again are nominees who fail to meet the basic test of intellect and integrity and responsibility. I look at all of the records of nominees before us and ask them questions to determine what their basic values are, whether they think particular Supreme Court precedents were correctly decided, like Brown versus Board of Education and Roe v. Wade, because it is a view into their basic commitment to constitutional principles that are deeply and ideally settled. Matthew Kasmerick fails that test. If there is a principle enshrined in our Constitution that matters more than any other, it is the idea that everyone is equal before the law. No one is above the law. No one is less entitled to rights than anyone else. Everyone is equal, regardless of race, gender, ethnicity, regardless of who you are, how much you own, where you were born, and what your race or gender or ethnicity is. Mr. Kazmarek seems to lack respect for this basic principle. In fact, his career is defined by active opposition to the treatment of minority groups. In 2016, he submitted an amicus brief supporting a Virginia school board's policy that students must use the restroom corresponding to their biological genders. Also in 2016, he sent a letter to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services arguing that the Department of Health and Human Services should not require hospitals to conduct sex reassignment surgeries for transgender individuals. He wrote in that letter that transgender people are suffering from a, quote, psychological con condition in need of care, end quote, and are, quote, not in a category of person in need of special legal protection, end quote. 
He went so far as to say that experiences of transgender people are, quote, irrational and, quote, delusional, end quote. In light of these and other statements, I've received numerous letters from parents of transgender people writing in fear and alarm that someone with such offensive, extreme, medically inaccurate views could be promoted to a lifetime position on the federal judiciary, a position that will give him power over the lives of exactly these individuals seeking equality under the law. 17 of our House colleagues, some of them parents and grandparents of transgender people, have written to us expressing their concern that someone with such hostile views toward LGBTQ in Americans could possibly be confirmed as a judge. Our colleagues in the House are concerned about the decisions we're making here because they feel and they respect these individuals. Kazmierich has also repeatedly made public his opposition to marriage equality and the equal treatment of same-sex couples. He submitted an amicus brief in Obergefell versus Hodges, urging the Supreme Court to not extend the right of marriage to same-sex couples. He thankfully did not prevail in that view because the court upheld the rights of same-sex couples to be married. And he continued his opposition to marriage equality by representing the owners of an Oregon bakery who refused to bake a case for same-sex couples. He testified in favor of legislation in the Texas Observer, described as a, quote, license to discriminate, end quote, adoption bill that would permit adoption agencies to refuse to place children with same-sex couples. Many in Congress, including myself, worked to pass the Equality Act, which would reflect the core Supreme Court ruling of adding sexual orientation and gender identity to the federal code's list of protected classes. He has referred to this effort as a weaponization of Obergefell that seeks the public affirmation of the, quote, erotic desires of liberated adults, end quote. Even as I recite these quotes, I can hardly believe that at this moment in our history, at this time of awareness among informed and tolerant people who believe in inclusiveness and equal justice under the law that someone nominated to this position of paramount responsibility would have these views and articulate them in this way. If the Equality Act were to become law and face a challenge in Judge Kazmierich's court, could litigants feel comfortable or confident that they will receive a fair hearing? Is there any gay, lesbian, transgender, or non-binary person who would feel their case would receive a non-biased treatment in his court? I have such deep doubts as should my colleagues, that I cannot vote for him. I will oppose his nomination, and I hope my colleagues will join me in voting no on Matthew Kasmer. Thank you, Madam President, and I yield the floor. I suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk, call the roll. Mr.